All right, we're here with Greg Benning. Set a uh, course record yesterday in the Grandmaster single. Uh, repeat champion in the event as well. And uh, beat the record by 39 seconds, I believe. Is this something you thought you could do when you went out on the water yesterday? Um, well, it, the, the flow is really low. Um, and did, did you know that ahead of yeah, time? Yeah, there's, a, there's an online thing you can look at. And it's down around 60 feet a second, and usually it's around 150, so yep. that's all good. It's also, um, there has, with, with the low flow, the water temperature tends to stay up, so yep. which, which, which helps. Uh, the, the buoy lines were set fairly tight this year, uh -huh. which helps. Um, and then you had a, a, a number one bow marker obviously helps, because you can, you can pick your own line. Yeah. And then the last thing was the wind was kind of, you know, it was like three to five southwest, yeah. which which isn't huge, but it, it's not hurting. General. Right. And usually here you have conditions like you do on Sunday where it's ten to fifteen west northwest, which is which is just going to slow you down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty to forty seconds. So yeah, I mean, things were lined up yesterday. It was good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I tweeted something about the afternoon looking particularly fast, but I came off the water and I saw the time and I was like, oh. so you didn't know you were doing this. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that was a that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you know that? Do you know the course record and you know your times and all that? Did you know yeah, that? No, I knew I knew what the course record was, and you know you'll you'll, you'll do these time trials here in August and September and everything's yeah. great. But then you get to October and the winds tend to change and the water gets colder. Yeah. And, you know, and it's just different because um, um, the buoy lines you have to watch where they are so you don't get nailed for penalties. Yeah, sure. Uh, and it slow, that all slows you down. Yeah. What do you th um, just sort of an, on a rowing wonkish factor? What with Water temperatures and things like this. What kind of time changes do you see in a single? I think I think um, they would say over two k, a ten degree change in water temperature is good for a, a couple of seconds. Over the two k. Yeah. So in so will you post eight. similar time in an eight? So you post similar times in August to what you do here in October. Yeah. So you know I think I think from from August to October you know. Water temp may but slow you down five to seven seconds. Yeah. So yeah. as you were rowing this piece yesterday, did you have any sense of the speed you have of that yeah. you were you were doing? She was like a big basketball player in Jersey. We had a, uh, I had a stroke, a I had a stroke girl. coach in the boat <laughs> and had an average, average meters per second. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was showing like 4.2 at the finish, including the warm up time. So, you know, I, I, knew, I knew it was, uh, I knew it was going to be a fast time, but yeah. You know, I, 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 you know, in 1850, I yeah. about it. Did you, uh, was there anyone sort of in the pack that you were thinking, okay, it was in the back of your mind that, all right, if these guys, if I relent at all. Yeah, um, most of it was front loaded, so you know. Most of the event was. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. watching. I was watching bows two, three, and four yeah, yeah. closely. Um, there wasn't anybody deep in the pack that I was, you know, preoccupied with. But you know that there's a certain danger there because you could just have some international Olympian pop in there. And yeah, then, sure. You know, all of a sudden, you know, you got problem you weren't anticipating. Right, right. Um, but, um, yeah, no, the number two was Peter McGowan, who's a Canadian Olympian yep. from Los Angeles. And then number three was Mike Cataldo, who I had some history with at the um, elite level back in the early 80s. Yeah, sure. And then John Tunnicliffe, who's also done well here. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, there was, there was plenty of depth. Yeah. So we got a three-year streak, this, but this is a different event now. First yeah, one was I've, in the I've, I've won, lower event. I've won the 30 to 39 twice, the 40 to 49 twice, and then, and then this is my second time winning the 50 to 59. Um, and so that's it? Twice each? That's uh, yeah, you're done? Three times in the double. Okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then I've got seven second places. Yeah. Seven so, second place. Yeah, which, okay. would all, which all have their respective, you know, little adventures. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Excellent. With buoys and, yeah. you know, mishaps and, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, both coming in. Uh, so do you think you can get like a 10-year uh, streak going from now to your 59? Well, one guy, one guy that wasn't in the division this year that I, I think will be there next year is Tom Bloor. Yeah, yeah, and that's right. Tom and I go like this. Yeah. So, um, Do you train together? No, here. we don't train together, but we're very close to each other, so um, competitively. Um, so there could be a year where he, he gets he gets on a roll and crushes me, and then the next year I'll return the favor. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> nice job. So good sporting, oh, yeah. eh? Sorry, am I in the middle of an interview? So I say, good job. <laughs> and there's a high five, and that 